All right, Lucid Air Grand Touring Dream Drive Protest, 150 miles from Portland to the Dalles and back. Let's go. Okay, so the goal for today is relatively simple. We're gonna take my Lucid Air Grand Touring. I've got three and a half years and 40,000 miles, actually 40,057 miles. We're gonna go from Portland, Oregon to the Dalles and back today. So the goal is to spend this entire video with zero manual input outside of when I have to turn around in the Dalles. So we're gonna let this drive itself. I'm not gonna do anything other than lane changes. And even that, I won't put my hands on the wheel unless it's absolutely necessary. We're gonna deal with everything. We've got curves, we've got tunnels, we've got trucks, and we've got terrible drivers, and maybe some surprises along the way. This is the first one of these reviews. I'm excited to show it to you all. So a little bit of context. I absolutely love this car. It is fantastic, and I enjoy driving it every day. You can see my three and a half year review, link in the description as well. One of the things that's really great about this though is Dream Drive Pro has become a fantastic feature on this. Ever since the 2.8 update, it is hands-free on the freeway, just eyes for it. It only requires me to pay attention and we knock down hundreds of miles in Dream Drive Pro. I think at this point it's better than Tesla full self-driving in a lot of situations. And I know people are gonna fight me for that one, but I will die on that hill. So right now we've gone ahead, I popped in Dream Drive Pro, I have done zero inputs. I have a vehicle in front of me that I'm unfortunately stuck behind, but say la vie, that's Oregon for you. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll pass them when we get an opportunity. I've got cruise control set, and we are just gonna buzz all the way out there. So we'll see how far it can go. I actually don't know if with the recent update, if it will do fine through the tunnels or not. So I have driven this out before on the 84, out to, uh, what was it, out to Rufus, and had, did not have to touch the wheel. So this should do just fine on this drive. But again, not fully sure. It may require some interventions. That time I went out there was very early in the morning. There was nobody on the road. So we'll see how it does this time. Oh, here's our first test. Coming up on this Walmart truck, how well does it do? Not too aggressive of a braking. Backed off nicely. It, it noticed the Walmart truck relatively early, so there was nothing late here. And he kind of moved right in the lane without much consideration. No issues there. So that's definitely a point for Dream Drive Pro. How well are we doing for lane centering so far? I mean, we really haven't tested the lane centering that much. We haven't had to deal with a lot, but overall it's pretty much smack in the middle of the lane. So we have like no question that this is really well aligned. One of the things I do love about this is it has an adjustable follow distance and it does a good job of just maintaining that distance really well. It reacts fast enough that you don't ever close too much distance when someone say pulls in front of you, but at the same time, it's not slow enough that you get scared or anything. So it pretty consistently is able to manage that distance and anticipate things that are about to happen without making you feel concerned. So this is by far, I think, the most comfortable self-driving I've used yet. One of the things I really love about Dream Drive Pro is it makes me feel comfortable enough to get to really relax and enjoy more of the experience when I would otherwise be stressed. Like, it does very well, surprisingly, in rain and at night. And so I feel very comfortable just kind of chilling out, holding a cup of coffee, I'm not concerned about things that may come up because it does a great job of adjusting speed well in advance of a turn. So that's the difference with the Lucid using Dream Drive Pro because I've used Tesla full self-driving and sometimes it scares the hell out of me. It pulls moves that make me nervous. It gets too close to the lane edges or other vehicles. It doesn't slow down in time or it slows down too aggressively. It's not predictable in a way that brings me confidence. Yet Lucid's Dream Drive Pro, it is. All right, looks like a construction zone. So I may actually have to over, I may have to take control here. We're gonna see how it does. But I'm gonna go ahead and lower my speed. Uh, Hands-free disabled because of a construction zone. Fair, I'm not gonna dock a point on that because in this case, that's something to be expected. The car is not necessarily gonna anticipate a construction zone. I think if anyone does make it through, I'll give a bonus point on that, but this is to be expected. Looks like hands-free re-enabled in here in the construction zone. So apparently it was only that area where the cones were and now I'm back to hands-free mode. Very interesting. It's a little close to the left, but otherwise doing just fine. So outside of that one bit where it said construction zone hands-free was disabled, I have not touched the wheel there and we're out. So it's interesting. For that moment, it said hands-free was disabled, but it actually was still enabled. I think it takes a moment and says, okay, looks like construction. But then when the, when the area of those orange pylons ended, it, it never actually took me out of hands-free and I stayed in it. I did not need to take control there. I never, I only took control of that brief moment at the start, and then it went back into hands-free mode, which actually, that's really nice. 
So zero issues with the construction zone. Impressive, Lucid. So it detected that guy moving a little bit to the left there and slowed down to be careful. I'm gonna back off a little bit because of this turn up here. That's the only real speed input I've given this outside the construction zone. That truck is gonna merge in front of me. Oh, uh, never mind. Looks like he passed on merging. I'm gonna still back off just a smidge because of the turns. Okay, coming up on the tunnels, it says hands-free driving disabled soon. Interesting, I'm in it through before? No, actually, again, interesting note. So I think I might have to dock a little bit of points there because it's notifying me of disabled, but it's not actually disabling. It says it's disabled, but it's not. That's really interesting. I wonder, it didn't do that the last time I went through here. So that was three times it told me it was disabling hands-free, but you never actually took it off. All right, we are coming up on some construction again. I'm gonna just back off a smidge here. Looks like the left lane's gonna disappear. So let's try, uh, go ahead and merge. That was a merge on a turn too. Yeah, pretty chill. We're just gonna park it here and... So let's see this time, what does it do? So it sees the pylons, but because they're not close, I don't think it considers this construction. We're still in hands-free mode. Let's see what this does. Okay, looked like that was all that it was. And we're also into some rain now. I didn't do any steering inputs back there. I just changed speed and that was it. Seems to be handling these undulations in the road very, very well. Okay, a little cautious here. Let's see what it does. We just had a little bit of standing water on the road. I felt the traction control engage, yet it did not actually do anything. It kept me in and kept me stable. That was impressive. Got another little bit right here. Let's see what it does. Nope, no problems either, and we're on this turn. I'm gonna merge over in a moment here, so let me go ahead and initiate the lane change and go behind here and let people pass me. That was a turning merge. Yeah, it took a moment, but did fine. Look at that, centered pretty quickly. And this guy ahead of me was slowing down and letting people pass. That was impressive. One of the things I have to say about Oregon is that the Columbia River Gorge is stunning. As you can see, the cliffs up above me here are incredible. The river is amazing. I really do love it here. It's a state filled with such a depth of natural beauty that I just can't get enough of it. And I love it. All right, here we are heading westbound after turning around to the Dalles. So far, this trip has only required one steering input. I gotta say, I'm impressed after hitting rain about 25, 30 miles west of here. We went through a couple instances of standing water and at no point was it an issue. The vehicle handled it beautifully, went straight through, no problems. I'd say that the only real gripe I've got with this is that the tone to alert you when you're not looking at the road enough is not intrusive enough. I think a great feature would be instead of just the tone, if you have the seat massage function, the massage function does have a vibrate function, and have it go whoop, 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 right underneath you, that'll wake you up real fast. So now let's go ahead and fast forward all the way west. Alrighty, so we're just rolling into Hood River now. Again, gone with nothing happening, but now we're about to hit some serious rain. So let's see how it does with more moderate to heavy precipitation. And moving around. God, why is this person going like 60? I don't get it, Oregon drivers. All right, we're heading westbound again. Very, very wet. We're west of Hood River right now. Got a lot of spray kicking up. We just hit some standing water a minute ago that was on the roadway. Didn't even blink. And that was right at the tail end of a lane change. Right now we're just chilling out here. I felt like no major steering corrections, no major changes, no freakouts or phantom braking. Though I am gonna back off on speed a little bit to say 71. I will merge over in just a moment here. There we go. Let this guy behind me pass. All right, coming into construction. Visibility is really poor. This guy's merging in front of me in the lane. No problems, look at that. This guy just cut me off pretty hard too. Visibility was honestly terrible right there. No question, went right through that. Wow. Went through a little bit of ponding water right there. No problems again. It's interesting, right at the tail end of a merge, you can hit some water and it doesn't even upset the car at all. Go straight through. Well, you got a minute, please like and subscribe. I got a bunch more stuff coming down the pike. You're gonna love it. I'm looking forward to the next video. Rivian R1T versus the Atmospheric River. Ooh, should be fun. Oregon drivers, seriously? You have to hang in my blind spot. Useless. As you can see, 
there's a good reason why I still consider this to be the best of the freeway hands-free driving. Okay, we're coming up on another area of construction. So I'm gonna just merge over, see what we do. And this flatbed truck just chilling out there. Over we go. So let's see what it does here. Does it again, does it do like last time? Does it have me take over or is it completely content to control? Let's take a look and see. So it says hands-free driving disabled, but it hasn't taken me out of hands-free. Interesting. So now hands-free is enabled. So yeah, no points to take away from that because I still have not had to, again, it's warning me hands-free disabled because of construction, but then it doesn't actually disable it. So I'd say that's a, that's a software thing, but it still clearly is working without issue. I have still yet to provide any steering input here. That was a little bit of squirreliness right there. Okay, okay, that was the first, oh. There we go, it got confused from the lines. That's the first time I've had to take over, wow. All right, so now it's pop me out of drive assist. It says it's unavailable in this area. All right, so right there. So I think what happened was those, those grooves in the lane that you saw from the construction there, that upset it. Let's see, okay, drive assist is available again. We'll turn it back on. All right, okay, one area due to construction. So that is points against, it should be able to handle that a little bit better than it did. It definitely was a little squirrely there. You know, I think that that's one limitation of a lot of systems is they have a very hard time telling the grooves and the pavement apart. But outside that, that is the only time I've had to take over control. And we're almost done. Okay, wrapping up the Dream Drive protest, I've taken manual control one time. That's amazing. And it went through construction zones without any real issue, saying that hands-free driving would be disabled, but it never actually ended up getting disabled at all, except that one instance coming out of the last construction zone heading west. So the last little bit here as we come up to traffic, let's see what it does. How do we do? Just like that, super smooth. All right, so how did Dream Drive Pro actually perform in the end? Well, it did really, really well. I mean, again, one manual intervention that was required, handled construction zones flawlessly otherwise, dealt with standing water on the roadways, terrible drivers, a whole ton of different things, getting cut off. I mean, really, it's the benchmark to me. And while there's certainly competition in companies like Tesla, and I do have Tesla full self-driving coming up, I still consider this one to be so far the one I'm most confident in on the freeway at least. So with that in mind, I'm putting it as an A tier. Now, S tier is a whole other level. S tier is gonna require a lot of other things from a brand to go ahead and get that ranking. And it may not stay at A tier either for the long run. As new entrants get into the market, that ranking of what DreamTrap Pro is currently may go down. But Lucid will also continue to improve the product as they go. And the new version of DreamDrive Pro in the Gravity, DreamDrive Pro 2, will also be another leap past this. So in the end, this is a fantastic product that you really need to be considering. Especially if you're considering leaving Tesla, you can know that you can be confident in DreamDrive Pro and Elucid. And if you're a new entrant to EVs as well, this really could make the difference for you. Anyways, thank you everyone for joining. Take a moment to like and subscribe if you have a second. And also leave a comment if you have questions. I try to respond to everybody that I can get to. I really appreciate you being with me on this journey. And stay charged up.